Hi friends, I hope you all have seen UPSC 2020 mains exam papers. So friends, the first exam essay. So today I will discuss the answers for the eight questions given in the essay paper. So what I would most do is I will only tell you the main points or ideas or the concepts or the facts or my opinions which I would have used while writing the answers for these essays. So I would not be writing any kind of paragraphs. I will not make any paragraphs because it will take too much time for me to finish this video if I write paragraphs. However, using these points or ideas, you can try to build up the paragraphs in your own style. Friends, I would not be discussing about how to connect the paragraphs, what are the connecting words, how to make it, make it easy for evaluator, all these things I would not be discussing in this video. I will only tell that if I have to write these essays, what are the points I would mention in the essays and what is the introduction that I would write, what type of conclusion I would write. So that's what I'm going to tell you in this video. So along with the answers, I will analyze the essay and also brainstorm few points of uh, you know each essay. Friends, uh, section A, as usually from last four to five years, what is happening in the UPSC essay exam, they are giving four questions uh, unconventionally, mostly based on the ethics or your analysis. How do you personally understand those statements and how do you connect it with the different areas, maybe history, geography, economy, how do you connect it? So uh, the, section, the section A is all about this kind of essays. Whereas the section B is mostly, you know, within the part of the UPSC syllabus, one is technology, GS paper 4, and the Society of India, GS paper 1, you know, and the social justice, again GS1, culture civilization is GS1. So I, I would say that these three directly, you know, fall under the syllabus of general studies paper 1, and this general studies paper 4 for technology, GS2 for international relations. So section B is mostly whatever you study in the UPSC syllabus, you can use it. Whereas section A, you can write the answer only if you have a good reading habit or if you have practiced this kind of essays or you know, you, you, you have a habit of writing the essays, you know, by understanding the quotations. For example, in general studies paper 4, in the theory question, first 13 questions, sometimes they give you quotations and ask you to answer them. So this is somewhat like that, but you are write in the essay format. So friends, without much delay, let us go to each question. I would first start with the eighth question, then I will start from one, two, three, four, you know, I will finish the remaining seven questions. So friends, the eighth question, technology is an important factor, is a salient factor in the international relations. So as I would always say in essay, first one, two, one and a half page, uh, assuming that most of the students write around six to nine pages. Friends, there is no hard and fast rule here. I know students who write only 5 pages but they get 140 plus in essay. There are students who write 9 to 10 pages but they get only 90 to 100 marks. Similarly also, there is no hard and fast rule about facts. Some students use a lot of facts, a lot of current affairs but they may get less marks. Whereas some students use, you know, limited facts, limited current, current affairs. They will write more of their opinions and analyze the statement given and they may get good marks. So friends here. I would uh, build up this essay by first explaining what do I mean by international relations and what are the various factors that determine the international relations and then I would come to how technology is an important factor in the international relations. That's how, how I build up my essay and even while explaining the importance of technology, I would say how it is important in the defense relations, in the space relation, economic relation, the social relation between the countries, the, you know. Uh, and other sectors where we can use technology. So friends, uh, the starting point can be, you can just uh, write what do you mean by international relations. You can say that you know international relations actually studies the interaction between different countries and also between non-government organizations and also you know NGOs, the corporates uh, in various fields such as the politics, economy, peace, security, mostly they revolve around the commerce and also they try to improve the quality of life as a whole globally, globally. So 
you know, it is actually cooperative exchange between the countries in order to ensure these things. So that's how you can broadly define the international relations as. And also, friends, you can say that the importance of international relations is increasing these days because of increasing globalization. As you know, as is a globalized world, the interconnectedness between the countries is increasing. Obviously, the importance of international relations also increase. However, if, you, if I had to write the importance of IR, I can write some 10, 20 pages. But that's not the essay here. So just briefly write three or four points. No need to write all the aspects. You can say, as the globalization is increasing, the connectedness of the world is increasing, and hence the trade policies have become much more important in the interest relations. Also, tourism is increasing, migration is increasing, thus international relations also becomes more important. And because of tourism migration, you know, uh, human beings are getting, people are getting better opportunities to enhance the quality of their life. Also friends, IR is important to address the global challenges, major global issues like, you know, the refugee crisis, the pandemics like COVID-19, terrorism, the climate change issues. To address these things, IR has become more important. Also, IR is important because it can advance the human culture through cultural exchange. Different cultures can interact with each other as a whole there will be cultural change you know uh, between the countries exchange between the countries and also the diplomacy and it helps you in developing the policy IR helps you in developing the policy for every country after explaining this in one paragraph or so one or two paragraphs I would move on to tell what are the various means by which IR is conducted various means by which IR is international relations connected. For example, one is the bilateral agreements. It, for example, for every point that you mention, you can just write an example, but no need to explain the example. You can just mention the one, two, three, the India-USA civil nuclear agreement is an example of bilateral agreement. And there are multilateral agreements, protocols, treaties, like, you know, ASEAN trade in goods agreement, any agreement between the SAR countries, the African Union, any agreement between those countries, West African countries, you can write any one of them. Also, the international corporations which exist in multiple countries also play a very important role in the IR. For example, MNCs like Toyota, Siemens, which are there across many countries. Also, the media also plays a very important role, friends. The BBC, Forbes, this Forbes magazine, BBC Broadcasting, they play an important role. And the intergovernmental organizations, you know, uh, which will work with different governments closely, like World Organization, or NATO, a security alliance between different governments, or United Nations, which is the largest international organization. You can mention those things. Also, there are several think tanks which will bring the government officials, also some intellectuals, some researchers in academia, they'll bring them together and they will study various aspects of international relations. So you can mention these things in just a paragraph or so, friend, not more than that. Now, the question says technology is a salient factor in international relation. So, before going technology, you can briefly enumerate or list out various factors that play a very important role in the IR. You know, you can say the level of economic development actually matters. For example, friends, as USA is a highly developed country, every country wants to be in good relation or good term with USA. Similarly, friends, depending on the amount of dependence on the foreign trade, for example, India is dependent for the oil on the West Asia or Latin America or Russia. So definitely we will try to have strong relation with them. Similarly, friends, the political stability of a country also plays an important role. The politically unstable countries like Maldives, you know, or the, the North African countries quite some time back. So for su with such countries, people generally, the other countries may not try to have a strong relationship because the government frequently changes there. Similarly, the, our IR also depends upon type of government structure and also type of ideology, different type of ideology. You know, for example, democratic countries generally travel on the same boat, whereas communist countries may travel on the same boat, like that. The structure of the government decides the relationship. Also, security plays an important role, security. For example, NATO is formed for collective security of, uh, you know, USA and some Western European countries. Also. The IR depends on the economic resources, how they are distributed. For example, Africa is a continent having a huge economic resources. So every country wants to develop a strong relation with them. 
and China has made strong inroads into Africa for economic resources only. Also, few countries participate internationally, whereas few countries are closed. And closed countries generally nobody will try to build up good relations with them. Similarly, the status of a country, for example, the P5 countries, which have a strong status because they are prominent members of UNSC, obviously countries like India need to have good relations with them so that anything internationally has to happen, India can push it through the P5 countries. Also, friends, our relation depends upon the geostrategic location. For example, friends, India, if it has to go through Afghanistan by bypassing Pakistan, they can go through, go through Iran. So, Iran is a geostrategical and a good location for India. Similarly, the, if India wants to have a strong hold on the Indian Ocean, then the Indian Ocean island countries, the small developing island states, India should have a strong relation with them. So, friends, there are various factors. And then you come to the actual point, how technology is a salient factor. You know, you can always start the essay with two or three good stories or good current affairs examples. For example, I would say the technology is a salient factor uh, by explaining two examples. I would say how USA, how you know, how USA is having soft power throughout the world because of the WWW, the World Wide Web. How every country uses WWW and how USA is controlling this uh, World Wide Web because of how, see, right now World Wide Web has become a global public good. So if US is controlling it, US exclusively managing it, definitely USA will have better soft power than other countries. You know, like the technology plays an important role. Also, friends, for example, take India. When Abdul Kalam was the president, he proposed that, uh, you know, uh, India can build a strong relation with entire African continent by Pan-African e-network project, wherein India, use, India is very strong in higher education and medicine. We can provide these services to African countries online by e-network, telemedicine, tele-education by e-network. So friends, you, as India is very strong information technology, we can use the technology as a salient factor to build a strong relation with Africa. So by explaining these two examples, I am telling the evaluator that see this is how technology plays an important role in international relations. And now friends, like any UPSCSA, you should start explaining the topic in different sectors. For example, first I would uh, take up from history, how historically technology played a very important role. I will tell them that in the ancient India, in Rajasthan, you know, uh, in the Thiri Valley, in Thiri Valley, jinx melting was done and to learn this technology, people from other countries have come. People from other countries have come here to learn this technology. For example, Persians have come here. So, friends, similarly, uh, Tipu Sultan, when he was the uh, king of Mysore state, he was close to France because he has got a lot of technology from the France, particularly the war technology from the France. In fact, the Britishers were inspired from Tipu Sultan's iron case rockets, whereas Tipu Sultan has maintained relations with France for technology. That's how technology in the US historically was a very important role between the countries. And friends, uh, in, in the Indus Valley civilization time, around some, say, some uh, uh, 1500, some 2000 BC, 2200 BC. During that time also, we have seen Egyptian boats, some boat models of Egypt in Lothal, Lothal, the present day Gujarat, which says that there was, you know, exchange of technology between the countries even in those days, in those days. If you fast forward to 1960s, Green Revolution played a very important role in international relations. Uh, for example, India has uh, got the high yield variety of rice, IRA rice from Philippines, and dwarf variety of wheat, the Sonaro wheat from the Mexico. Mexico. So, like that, you can write few points in history and then come to each sector. For example, you can talk, come to different sector. You can say how in the dif international relations, in the different sector, how technology played a very important role. Friends, in fact, you can write some 30 to 40 pages only on different technologies, but that's not the case here. So, keep it short. Write one or two paragraphs of defense technology and move on to other sector. For example, India Russia relations are highly based on the defense technology. In, uh, uh, Russia was the greatest exporter of uh, defense for the India. And for example, Brahmos, a supersonic cruise missile, uh, is jointly developed by India and Russia. Even INS Arihant is an Akula class submarine. We, you know where we have technology transfer from uh, Russia for the submarine. Similarly, friends, in the India's FDA policy for defense also, it is clearly mentioned that India will allow FDA from those countries which are ready to transfer the technology to India. 
so that India can in future develop our own defense equipment. Also friends, the nuclear technology, you know, the global politics revolve around nuclear technology. As India is not a signatory of non-proliferation treaty, China is not allowing India into nuclear, you know, suppliers group. Even Japan is not ready till recently to uh, export the nu techno nuclear technology, even the civil nuclear technology to India till recently. However, you know, friends, uh, after 2008, uh, after the 123 agreement between India and USA, several countries started exporting uranium to India and civil nuclear reactors to India. You know, basically, nuclear technology plays a very important role in the international relations. And India, though it is not a member of uh, NSG, it is a member of uh, Missile Technology Control Design, the Australian Group, Washington Arrangement, where we control the harmful technologies, where we keep a limit to the destructing technologies. Friends, also recently India uh, planned to purchase 100 heron drones from Israel. Uh, while the tension between India and China is growing, India has actually planned this step. Thus, in fact, Israel is the third, large expo third largest exporter of uh, you know, defense equipment to India, defense technology to India. Though India uh, is supportive of separate Palestinian country, even then, the India-Israel relations were strong, particularly in the technology transfer and defense also, friends. In fact, you can write a write lot, but just you have to stop it somewhere and move on to the next sector, the space. For example, friends, India has improved a lot in the space sector. Space sector. For example, our success in Chandrayaan project and mission, mission to the Mars project and our PSLV is highly successful. That's why several countries are, you know, launching their satellites using our PSLVs. This has attracted several countries to collaborate with India in the space relation. Friends, leaving India aside, generally, because this topic is not just about India, you can write uh, certain technologies in which India is not a part of also. For example, International Space Station uh, has actually brought together countries like USA, Russia, Canada, Japan, and even the European countries, the European Agency, they together developed the International Space Station, which is doing a great job even now it is in orbit. Similarly, friends, India has developed its own navigation system called NAVIC and India said that NAVIC can be used by the SAR countries. Thus, India is trying to develop the soft power. In the international relations, friends, soft power is very important. India is trying to develop that using the technology of space. Also, they know the, uh, the ISRO of India and NASA of USA have developed the NISAR mission which will measure Earth's changing ecosystem, also how the surface are dynamic on the surface, about ice masses, the biomass, it studies the natural hazards, how the sea level is rising because of global warming and the level of groundwater. So all these things are studied together by India and USA. Also friends, the South Asia satellite has brought together all South Asian countries for, you know, to, to collaborate in the fields of medicine, education, banking, and broadcasting. Also, the real-time weather data can be, you know, studied by all these countries. Friends, space diplomacy is going to become very important in the IR in future because uh, to coexist peacefully, outer space has important role to play for the humankind. And recently, Russia and India also collaborated in the India's Gaganyan project. So, in that way, you can write uh, two two paragraphs or so for the space uh, technology. And coming to the how technology is useful for security in international diplomacy you know I have given only one point here friends but there are several points that you can write I said that uh, in the Indian Ocean countries the countries on the Indian Ocean like the Seychelles uh, you know the, the Sri Lanka Mauritius uh, for these countries India is supplying the coastal coastal radar technology which will help those countries Navy you know, to keep a tab on what is happening on the Indian Ocean. The ship movement can be understood by them and it is important for their naval security. In that way, India is using a technology to bring, to build relation with the, you know, the Indian Ocean countries. Friends, cyberspace is becoming more and more important. Particularly during the COVID pandemic, my dear friends, as more people are going, are using cyberspace, for education, health, whatever means for the uh, jobs, all these things, cyberspace is becoming more important. Hence, the cyber attacks and cyber security 
cyber attacks will increase and hence cyber security becomes predominant here. So in this context, India is developing strong relations with several countries in the cyberspace. For example, even before, from, from three years back also, India, Australia signed a memorandum of understanding to combat terrorism. See friends, terrorism, uh, terrorist recruitment is happening online and cyberspace is used by terrorists more and more. Hence, uh, India, Australia signs some more, even civil, civil aviation security also, the space security also. Also, the India's uh, major body that helps in cyber security, the CERTIN, the CERTIN and Bangladesh's, Bangladesh ICD division have also signed MOU uh, to exchange sensitive information and to uh, secure their uh, national cyberspace. Also friends, India and French security forces have collaborated cooperated you know in the cyberspace in the fields of homeland security special forces intelligence and to fight against the criminal networks who use cyberspace as it is a common threat common threat both the countries face common threat of criminal networks and terrorism also friends india indonesia also similarly sharing the intelligence india israel also you know uh, collaborating uh, to tackle the cyber threats because of uh, increased digitization happening due to COVID pandemic. Hence, in the virtual world, India have to strive stronger and build, build good relations with all the countries. Friends. Also, here, uh, the climate change. The climate change technologies are becoming important day by day because climate change has become a reality. So, India is collaborating with several countries in this, in this area. Friends, here if you observe, to reduce the greenhouse gas, climate technologies such as building up of renewable energies, wind energy, hydropower, solar power, in these in these technologies, India is collaborating. Basically, not in India, globally, all the all the countries are collaborating. Even uh, because of climate change, as droughts are increasing, we need technology, the biotechnology for drought resistant crops. Also, early warning systems for floods, for droughts, even the sea walls to stop the sea storms. All these technologies have become important in the international relations. UNFCC, for example, friends, which works on uh, combating the climate change, is, is helping in developing and transferring technologies to support all the countries to fight the climate change. And uh, the recent 2015 Paris Agreement also brought several countries onto the platform to discuss about climate change technologies. Friends, International Solar Alliance uh, mostly participated by the tropical countries. The Gurgaon of India has been headquarters and India is leading in that, uh, which is a good sign. Also, the Climate Technology Center Network is a body that continuously supports the climate technology projects to, with all the countries. Also, friends, the uh, you know the climate change uh, is not the only aspect even the environmental pollution have to be stopped that's why waste to energy transformation is important because india is generating billions of tons of waste annually so india and sweden are collaborating in converting the waste to energy without causing pollution also friends the lithium triangle countries of south american continent you know the chile bolivia argentina are helping india to build up the lithium battery plants also israel is helping india for water recycling, friends, Israel actually can recycle the water, wastewater, even the sea water into the uh, drinkable um, uh, water. So India is using the technology presently. Also, the China has suggested an idea to reduce the smog, the smokeless fog in Delhi through a tower. In this way, friends, you don't write all these things. You can write whatever you remember in the climate change technologies. And then we can come to the most important, how technology is helpful for economic social development, social development and how international relations are based on that. So friends, the, you know, uh, for the economic development, agriculture is important, for agriculture, irrigation technologies are important, particularly for India because of water scarcity. So Israel is helping in the micro irrigation technology. Also precision agriculture is important for efficient agriculture. Australia is helping India, collaborating in the, in the, in the direction. Also friends, mining is very important because India is completely dependent for oil and natural gas or other countries, not completely but mostly other countries. So shale fracking technology has to be uh, given to India by USA and other mine technology shall be learned from India by Western European countries. For example friends, Bangladesh, Bhutan, India, Nepal, VBN, the road corridor has been built 
and electric tracking system uh, is a proposed between these countries. Also, friends, other things are other you know social for social development. For example, for cancer treatment, uh, India has developed Babatron, which India has given to Mongolia. Also, friends. Intellectual property rights has become bone of contention between India and USA because India is strong in developing generic medicines, whereas USA, Switzerland, they develop uh, medicines with the, having patent for several years. But they are life-saving medicines, and India is able to develop the same medicine for lower cost, which is considered to be against their patent by those countries. However, India's IPR uh, IPR Act is quite different. We don't allow evergreening of the, of the uh, medicine or technology and life-saving drugs uh, are, shall be made for lower cost because it is saving several people all in India but Africa, Latin America and other poor Asian countries. So you can write about that one also friends. You don't have to write all the positive aspects of technology. You can actually write the negative aspects of technology also. For example, the cyber hacking can write and you know nuclear weapons you can write how it is how it has threatened the Japan during the Second World War. You can write new aspects also, friends. In UPS, you should write both sides of the coin and then finally tell your opinion. Also, how do you conclude? Friends, technology is a very vast topic, broad topic. Though you write an essay for 30 40 pages, even then there will be a lot, lot of technologies which you cannot cover because there are those many technologies. So, in the conclusion, try to briefly uh, mention the major technologies that are going to change the world and tell how all the countries should collaborate and cooperate in these technologies. For example, friends, technology is a future and hence in a globalized world, we have to share it. Technology increasingly dominate the international affairs. For example, Industrial Revolution 4.0 is happening. For example, India and Japan are collaborating in uh, Industrial Revolution 4.0. So the robotics, how we should collaborate with USA or Western European countries cloud computing, big data, data analytics, you know, internet of things is going to become reality uh, down the line after 30, 40 years, most of the world will be connected with IoT and artificial intelligence also, you know, we cannot stop this, it is going to come in everywhere and every country should adapt to this and hence uh, all countries uh, should collaborate in these technologies. That's how friends, international relations in IR technology is going to become more and more important in future as these technologies become predominant. Then friends, now I will come to the first essay. Uh, I will try to explain these essays briefly friends, briefly. See, the essay is a philosophical essay. Life is a long journey between human beings and being human. Friends, actually in this kind of essays, in the introduction, I would suggest you that you mention what do you mean by this statement. For example, human being is just the very existence of us human beings. Being humane is to be kind, considerate to the fellow human beings, to the nature, etc. So life is a long journey between these two. That means everybody, each of us human being only, we are born as human beings. But to, be, but to become humane, to become humane, it's a long journey. That long journey is life. So life is a long journey between human beings and being humane. That's what, uh, you know, I understand with the statement. What are you understand, you can write friends. Friends, I would tell you, I, I, I see this thing there. If some students interpret this statement slightly differently, it's okay. See, if, if interpretation is um, uh, different, your essay will be different. But you will not be punished for that. Whatever is your interpretation, based on that, are you able to write a good essay? That is what is tested. It's not whether, uh, okay, this person interpret the essay perfectly, so give you 140. This person do interpret, so give him 20 marks. Nothing like that, friends. You can interpret, you know, in slightly different ways. Now, friends, explain what you understand by the question. You can say that we are all born as human beings, but you know, it takes a long time to become humane. To become human. Because to become human, you have to go through several experiences. You know, transformation is an experiential process. You explain that. Also, friends, being a human being actually refers to our existence, our life, that's all. But being humane is to develop the qualities like empathy, kindness, considerate, etc. Also, you can explain the same statement in a very broad way. You know, you can say that being humane is not just considerate to the fellow human beings, but it is 
to be kind to the animals, birds, nature, I mean to the environment as a whole. In that way also you can explain. Or friends, some students uh, may start this essay with a with a example. Generally, introduction shall be interesting. It should not be boring. It should make the evaluator feel happy. You should you should have to make him read the remaining part of essay with happiness. So you can start with the story also. You can say how how you know uh, Valmiki was just human being previously. How he became human after a particular incident that happened in his life. I think all of you know the incident. You explain that incident. Also, you can say that Asoka, a ruthless king, who has, who, you know, who uh, uh, never felt bad, um, you know, in uh, causing violence or uh, in in too many wars. But one particular war, war has changed his mindset and attitude towards the world. How he became humane, how a particular experience made him humane, how it is a long journey for him. So you can explain, with, you can start with one of these two stories, friends one of the two stories or you can write theory you can write uh, what do you mean by the statement and friends now you should try to bring in all the things that you learned in UPSC into the essay okay so you can say what may be required to make every human being as human what is required for, uh, for us to become human for example write, write education friends if you observe education is one thing which you can use in every essay that's why I prepare some strong sentences for education so that you can use it almost every essay. Right education means it does not only give information or knowledge, it gives you the morals, it teaches you the ethics, it gives you strong emotional intelligence and cognitive intelligence. You can explain them if you require. Also, to become humane, we require good parenting, friends, good parenting. If your parents are humane, if they teach us about the kindness, how to be helpful to others, we learn that. Similarly, our family, extended family, our neighborhood, society, children learn a lot from society. So these things play a very important role in making everybody humane. For example, friends, in urban lifestyle, everybody is busy. So there's no enough time to teach the morals. But in villages, in the joint family system, uh, children generally have good chance, I'm saying good chance, to learn these morals. Similarly, friends, life experiences. Life, life itself teaches you, uh, you know, uh, how to become humane your experience teach you that even a religion teaches that or belief system the faith for example every religion may be the hinduism bhagavad gita or the islam the quran or the, you know the bible jandavas all these things teach how we have to become human so in that way you can write frame one or two paragraphs also you can tell that uh, uh, students or professionals shall be rewarded shall be rewarded for being humane for you know keeping up humanity only then they'll have incentive to be human incentive friends then the another paragraph next two paragraphs we can say how human beings lacking humanity is creating several problems what are the various problems around us uh, created by the human beings who lack humanity you can say communalism how religious intolerance violence against uh, the people from other religion how uh, it is a lack of humanity and you can say how the rich are exploiting the poor, how the vulnerable sections like the physically disabled, the women, the lower caste, the scheduled tribe, scheduled caste, or the children, or land agricultural laborers, how they're exploited. This exploit is happening purely because human beings lack humanity. That's what's happening. Gender discrimination is also an example of this one. Even degradation of nature, not respecting nature, you know, being violent towards the animals, birds, or nature is also a part of lacking humanity. So, friends, even if you an example that several accidents, road accidents, lead to deaths, not only because of there is no uh, hospital in the vicinity, but also because the bypassers are actually not uh, um, are not having the kindness to help a person who has met with an accident on the road. So, most of the bypassers are insensitive, inhumane. You can tell that example to explain how in our surroundings a lot of inhumanity is there and what are the problems created because of inhumanity. And friends, one aspect that I would write is that most of the laws which presently are there around us, I mean in the nation, most of the laws are actually not required if people are humane. For example, see, if everybody is humane, if they are kind towards children, do you think pox is really required? Similarly, do, if you think, if you, you know, if every man 
considers women as an equal gender and respects the woman, do you really think domestic violence act is required? Similarly, if you are all sensitive towards environment, is this act required? You know, the Indian Protection Act can be the Biodiversity Act or the Water Pollution Prevention Act, Air Pollution, whatever. Is it really required? Similarly, friends, if all the countries respect other countries and give importance to the peace, do you think international peace treaties are required? Similarly, if all of us are, are taking care of our parents or grandparents, do you think the maintenance of Senior Citizens Act, that act is required? So friends, you can say that uh, most of the acts are framed because most of us are inhumane. You can also say that even if the acts are framed, even then, if you lack humanity, those acts does not really matter. Those acts cannot be realized. You can say that. Then my next paragraph would be about, uh, you know, uh, about the um, uh, humanity is not only for a person, it's for a nation. So, for example, all the previous, previous paragraphs I wrote about uh, humanity for a person, humanity for a person, now humanity for a nation. You try to become broader. What you are writing for a person, you write it for the entire country also. Friends, you can say that a nation, a nation's humanity can be judged on certain factors, certain, for example, it can be judged on how they are making the policy towards certain sections of society, for example, refugees. Uh, when the Buddhist monks have come from China to India as refugees along with Dalai Lama, how did India treat them? You know, Atis Devo Bhava or generally India has, you know, soft corner or we deal with the refugees with kindness. That is, that's what the history of India is teaching us. Even you can say the Rohingya crisis is coming because several countries are not treating the refugees well. The country's policy towards the minorities or uh, for example in the in the in the Myanmar their policy towards the minorities is not so good that's why the rowing race has come in the first place has come uh, into the picture and how Bangladesh India how they are receiving the refugees so based on that you can judge the humanity of a nation also what is the policy of nation towards the disabled towards the old towards the children what's the policy of the nation based on that you can judge the humanity of a nation also what is the uh, policy of a nation towards the poor nations. For example, how India is treating uh, maybe Maldives, Afghanistan or Fiji or, or other poor countries. What kind of relation is India having with them or African countries? Based on that, you can judge the humanity of a nation. Also, our policy towards the minorities. What is the policy of India towards its minorities? Or what is the policy of Myanmar towards its minorities? You know, Pakistan. What is the policy of Pakistan towards uh, the Hindus or the minorities? Whatever. So, friends, what is the policy of Sri Lanka? towards the uh, towards the Tamilians because Sinhalese is the majority there what is the policy towards the Tamilians based on that my dear friends you can tell about the humanity of a nation whether a nation the nation as a whole is lacking the humanity and friends my next paragraph I would write about reasons why most human beings are not human see all human beings uh, either in India or globally why most of them are not human what is the reason I would uh, discuss it in two or three paragraphs I would say the economic system of that country may actually encourage the people to be selfish. See here you should not blame capitalism because capitalism is a good system in some regard. However, crony capitalism, how crony capitalism is, you know, is disregarding the humanity. You can explain that. Also you can talk about education system. If our education system of curriculum or our curriculum is simply focusing on facts or by hearting or cramming or it is awarding mocks to those people who can by heart more. But if it is not rewarding the people who have humanity, who have morals and ethics, such education system will not will not develop sensitivity towards the women, towards the poor, whatever. And that is, that is the reason why most of us are inhumane. Also, the reason why most of us are inhumane is the fundamentalism around us, the extremism around us, the communalism around us, parochialism, excessive nationalism, sectarianism, or regional inequality, all these things also are making people inhumane. Also, Violence is accepted in certain sections like in terrorists accept violence, Nexels accept violence to to achieve some ends. You know, these things around us is also creating inhumanity. Also, friends, inhumanity comes when our interaction with human beings reduces. For example, if you are interacting with people mostly through machines, through mobile phones, definitely the sensitivity to human being will gradually reduce. It will affect our humanity. Also, Nuclear families where both the parents are busy, working, children don't have time to spend time with them, 
you know um, old people or parents generally lack the sensitivity towards human beings so it is urban lifestyle so hence in urban lifestyle seriously we have to consider certain kind of social systems have to be developed to create sensitivity to the children towards fellow human beings also friends the tussle for power between the political parties how they are bringing communalism caste system uh, to win the votes to create to create the vote banks that is also a reason for you know uh, most human beings around us not became human so how do you conclude this essay for example if i have to conclude this essay i would say i would repeat the statement again that how life is a long journey how in the life you have to overcome the negative aspects all of us are human beings only born human beings but how should you overcome the negative aspects to become human on that aspect i will write my conclusion also i would say that it is responsibility for all of our all of us that we make our children humane so that when they grow up they'll make the country humane that's what i will build up my conclusion on so friends we should be careful uh, that the mass media like movies or television social media education curriculum uh, um, should not affect the children i mean it should make the children more humane and you have to create rewarding system within the country a rewarding system incentivizing the people who are humane who have the humanity you know friends that's how it should be as i told you i always write education system in my, in any of my essays friends my next essay is about uh, uh, second essay mindful manifesto is the catalyst to a tranquil self friends here uh, as usually if i have write this essay i will explain the statement in detail i'll explain the statement i would say what is a mindful manifesto see manifesto means having a plan having an agenda of what you want to do basically mindful manifesto means a thoughtful manifesto well thought out plan is must or not must it's very important or a well thought out plan will lead to catalyst means it will lead to tranquil self friends tranquility means peace tranquil self means inner peace a <coughs> peaceful mind peaceful body inner peace is called tranquil self so the question the statement is that a thoughtful or a mindful or a well thought out plan will help in achieving peace so that you can explain in your own language so friends you can actually uh, say that thoughtful plan for our life for our life thoughtful plan will help us in achieving the inner peace <coughs> inner peace or a peaceful mind or body if you uh, if you uh, want to write a quotation you can write dalai lama said that inner peace is the first step to to achieve the outer peace this is a quotation of the dalai lama as usually as i tell you i generally start with this uh, explanation of the uh, statement given in the question but some students may even start with a good story a story which you can directly relate to the statement given in the essay for example friends you can say that uh, uh, you can talk about the life of gautam buddha how how gautam buddha planned his life what all things he has done in life to achieve a peaceful inner self or vivekananda how he achieved the peace through what kind of steps or you know mother teresa according to mother teresa service to human being service to god she said that you know the praying lips are uh, you know the helping hands are better than the praying lips so her lifestyle her plan for the life is to serve the human kind that's how she achieved the peace abdul kalam how he he, he gave important the work work as the worship how he led a very simple lifestyle and how uh, he is able to achieve that inner peace how mahatma gandhi through his strategy of non violence integrity honesty how he how he followed his principles throughout the life throughout his life to achieve the peace so you can start with any of the stories explain see friends when you write the story of buddha or mother teresa whatever abdul kalam you know you should write their story in this direction how a thought out plan how a mindful plan helped them in achieving inner inner self like that you have to correct you should not write a general uh, life story of those people okay so friends now there are two ways you can interpret this one is tranquil self self means what self can be a person self can be a country a nation or self can be the entire world also okay also in the person within a person mindful manifesto can be for a single day or it can be for entire life so there are different ways in which you can analyze interpret this topic for example narrow interpretation would be if you want to have a peaceful day a tranquil day a day filled with tranquility you should have a reasonable plan for that day 
the plan should be based on what is important what is urgent what are your commitments your responsibilities how much time available for you what are abilities based on those things if you are able to check out a plan and follow the plan it will create a peaceful day for you however broadly what you can say for your life also you should have a plan what kind of job you want to do do you want to have a job of serving women kind or do you want to do research or you know what kind of uh, job you want to have what kind of hobbies you want to pursue what kind of people you want to marry so a plan for your life will also you know uh, create that uh, tranquility or peace in the in the self in us now from the personal level you can go to national level you can say that for a country a thoughtful plan a good manifesto can help in achieving the peace how you can write actually in my essay uh, some 50% of essay will be on the national level about nation somebody can write to person of essay about the personal level personally how do you achieve the tranquil self so you can write in whatever way you want but it should create some uh, sense and meaning to the evaluator so friends uh, for a country uh, how to create peace you should have a strong plan strong manifesto what kind of manifesto i would say you should uh, you should to address the communalism problem because communalism is a major destroyer of the tranquility so address communalism problem you should have a strong plan or act or policy to build the trust between various communities the majority and minority or also regionalism for example uh, in every state there is you know uh, a kind of uh, fight for creating a new state for example vidarbha from maharashtra you know in within uttar pradesh there are some uh, um, revolt or a, a, a local rebellion of how they want to create a separate state from up or you know gorkha land from west bengal or you know in uh, um, uh, you know from uh, this uh, telangana how telangana formed from andhra pradesh or you know in andhra pradesh you now how royal sima want separate region so basically regionalism happening it is actually destroying the peace how it should be addressed you should have a manifesto for that you should the the government should have a particular plan to develop the underdeveloped regions for example government is doing kbk the bundelkhand how they developing like that you should have a strong plan to develop this uh, uh, underdeveloped regions also friends vulnerable section should be taken care of the old the disabled the lower caste the minorities the women you know the tribes these people actually shall be taken care of in government should have a strong manifesto to improve their livelihood their their lifestyle you know uh, the, the happiness in them providing them the best requirements that's how such kind of manifesto actually helps in creating a peaceful nation a peaceful india friends gender discrimination how do you address that you should have a plan caste wars how to stop that have a plan how to stop terrorism nationalism insurgency should have a strong thought out plan also friends uh, india should have a plan for a good international relation manifesto for example friend china follows uh, an aggressive nationalism they claim all the water or air or land around them whereas india follows panchashil or non ln movement so if you observe the international relations or national the plan for india is mostly towards the peace towards the peace also to achieve tranquility self tranquility india should focus on healthcare and education of all because friends the ill health the malnutrition or illiteracy is a major source of uh, uh, disorder disorder or violence in the nation also a strong independent judiciary is required to solve any kind of disputes between the states or between sections of society also india should have a strong agenda manifesto towards the nature towards the environment because in long term it would create the peace also politics india should slowly eliminate the you know unscrupulous elements anti social elements from the politics morality and politics shall be developed friends the constitution is actually a long term agenda of creating a peaceful nation peaceful india in that way friends you can write some three four paragraphs about how a strong a, a, a mindful manifesto can create a tranquil nation tranquil self self is nation here now i will go, go to the global level i will say how tranquility can be achieved in the global global level global peace can be achieved what kind of manifesto is required again it's a broad topic friend you can write whatever points you want but just you have to bring out this dimension you have to show the evaluator that see uh, i interpret the self not as a person but as a nation as a as a world as a globe such kind of interpretation brings you more marks in the ss friends for example uh, globally if you want to achieve the tranquility tranquil self what kind of manifesto you should have you should have 
justice based international agreements the agreement should be justice based justice means burdens and benefits shall be shared by all the nations equally it's not that some some nations will get all the benefits and some get all the burden that is not justice okay similarly all the countries should hand hold the poor nations the west african countries or the sub saharan african countries or poor asian countries latin american countries how developed countries should help them improve also our manifesto should address the hunger problem the poverty problem pollution problem how war shall be avoided by strong institutions and negotiations you know how international court of justice shall be strong in solving this problem and how genocide shall be addressed eliminated gender discrimination is a major problem climate change so we should have a manifesto to solve all these problems strong global institutions are required to solve any kind of dispute uh, without going to the level of war also friends equal opportunity should be created to all the countries in the global institutions like uh, you know world trade organization world bank international monetary fund unfc all institutions but don't elaborate them just keep them short uh, you know two or three paragraphs maximum and friends now for the for those who want to write the personal level i have developed some points if you want to write how as a person at the personal level how a mindful manifesto helps us in achieving the tranquil self number 1 education system if you have a good education system a curriculum that that improves the morality cognitive intelligence and emotional intelligence automatically such kind of education such kind of education plan for any any child will improve tranquil self also friends everyone should take some time out for self evaluation understand the mistakes in you rectify them and personal growth that is important you should not become busy in the life stream so you should have that uh, manifesto you know you should have that plan every day to spend some time for self evaluation spend some time for meditation yoga or sports or pursue some hobbies pursue some hobbies to lead a stress free life this this kind of plan in your day to day life will help you achieve in the tranquil self also you should have a plan of how to accept the diversity of ideas diverse people around us and you should also take some time out for kindness you know spend some time for other people you work in some ngo or work in some organization you know at least uh, work some part of your life for society for nation for people around you it should friends actually that is a important part of you know this mindful manifesto that is a thoughtful plan i'm telling you that uh, in the essay you can write that you know such kind of plan actually can create can create a, a tranquil self also you should spend some time learn from the various uh, monks sages or from your religious scriptures about what kind of life you have to lead to achieve the inner peace inner peace okay friends then you should develop the qualities like fortitude unyielding courage honesty integrity actually integrity gives a lot of peace mental peace if your speech action words everything are same one and the same one and the same or obviously you will reach the tranquil self easily also you should be able to understand emotional intelligence understand the anger in you the greed in you fear in you try to sort it out and try to manage those emotions gradually try to eliminate those emotions from inside you also you know not anybody who does the work without expecting any kind of result uh, the art of detachment will actually help them achieve the inner peace we call it as a nishkam karma nishkam karma a spiritual concept Uh, unattached or detached work without expecting the outcomes will uh, keep you peaceful from inside also unconditional love is something which you have to practice you have to practice unconditional love towards everybody towards every human being or nature whatever about towards animals birds whatever that will actually ach- help you achieving the achieving the tranquil self friends essentially the point that i'm making is i think therefore i am said by rene descartes is a famous mathematician so he says that we have to train our thoughts that our thoughts will train us so friends uh, we are made by our thoughts so th- in this way these two pages you can write some three four paragraphs about the statement then uh, also i would write uh, two or three paragraphs about what are the obstacles for that tranquil self for individual for actual i wrote for individual here but you can write for nation also for nation also you can go back you can say that uh, nationally Uh, the main obstacle for uh, achieving tranquil self is there is no good health care system in india and uh, you know the protection of nature is not happening you can write you can address all these issues okay but here i will be writing only about uh, 
personal level personal level individual level what are the obstacles for for the tranquil self one obstacle is obsession to technology we are increasingly interacting with technology than human beings the same point I told in the previous essay also also too busy lifestyle that one is not able to get some time for his self evaluation self personal growth then how can they achieve uh, tranquil self similarly the education system has become more competitive cramming more information getting more mocks the education system is not pushing the students towards uh, realizing their self what they want what gives happiness so there's another obstacle also the biggest obstacle is for the youth is mass media friends the movies social media they portray things in a wrong way and you you actually believe that that actually gives happiness to them and they go in the wrong direction completely uh, like their friends you can write more points about uh, what are the obstacles for achieving the peaceful self uh, and friends how do you conclude you just conclude by saying that how these obstacles need to be addressed how the nation the world or individually we all should address the obstacles to achieve the tranquility that kind of conclusion i would say would fetch you more marks friends the next essay is about <coughs> ships do not sink because of water around them ships sink because of water that gets into them friends there are two ways in which you can interpret this statement one way is if you take a ship my dear friend there is water all around the ship okay and because water is there around the ship the ship does not sink but if the water enters the ship maybe because of a hole or whatever if the water enters the ship start entering the ship the ship will sink this is one kind of interpretation other interpretation is that ship actually requires the water to sail without water how can the ship sail so ship requires the water however it requires the water externally it should not allow the water internally if it allows water internally it will sink so these are the two interpretations of the statement so friends uh, if i have write the essay in the introduction i will write two paragraphs by just giving it means no need to draw diagrams friends i just drawn diagram just like that don't draw just you know you can explain the interpretation of the statements statement in two different ways okay for example uh, you can write the meaning we will be affected by what by what we let into our mind but not by what is what we are surrounded we may be surrounded personally at the personal level or national level we may be surrounded by a lot of things but whatever we let it into the mind or into the nation that actually affects the person or the nation first interpretation second interpretation is as i told you already ship requires the water around similarly we need all the experiences around us that will help us grow just like how the water helps the ship to sail the experiences around us are helpful for us to grow but we should not let them into us we should not be attached to them that is a second interpretation of the statement friend or you know you can as i always tell you you can start the story if you all start the story you can say any analog story you can say that mughal empire was very strong and though the european country started entering into india it actually did not affect the mughal empire water happening around mughal empire did not affect the mughal empire but the internal disturbances within the mughal princes the internal disturbances actually led the fall or decline of the mughal empire you can write in that way friend because actually what you are doing you are writing a story your example that suits suits the statement given suits the statement given mm-hmm. friends for example at the national also a nation will not fall because there are power tussles around the world war from other countries that that may, or there is injustice around the nation around means outside the nation or paracularism in surrounding countries or you know disturbance surrounding countries that will not affect the nation but when the injustice or the civil war or paracular when that comes into the country into the social fabric of the country that is when a country starts falling decline declining so in that way you can start the essay and friends as i told you the second interpretation how do you give example for that see i told you ship needs the water to sail but the water should not enter the ship similarly my dear friends you can give an example at the personal level that constructive criticism is important for all of us personally professionally constructive criticism people around us should criticize us from the criticism we have to grow we have to learn we have to develop so criticism and judgment is important it is required for the growth but if you start letting it in and if you are demotivated by the criticism if you start taking it in very seriously 
and if you are demoting you demoted yourself that will be the start of your decline in that way you can explain the second interpretation also as i told you nishkam karma i told you in the previous essay also you can say that all of us require that family the society you know we have to uh, do our duties to the organization as a child as a parent as an employer do all those things however you should not let any of them disturb you the expectations from from them should not disturb you should not destabilize you you can actually write that then friend now as you explained the statement uh, well now it's time to apply that statement now you start applying the statement in different sectors so what you can say is you can write a paragraph about we are all surrounded by negative ideas it can be through social media through mass media movies through advertisements promotions whatever we are all surrounded by them but it will not affect us only we let them into us that will start affecting us negatively you can give an example friends an young civil servant an young politician who wants to come into the politics or who want to come into civil services actually he will not fall down just because the system is corrupt the political system or the bureaucratic system it may be corrupt you know it may be very cruel but that does not actually let him down but when you become corrupt when you let the corruption inside you when you let the cruelty inside you insensitivity inside you that's when you are affected like that you can actually give a good example also friends another good example actually this kind of essay should have good examples good case studies you have to write in different paragraphs you can say that you know arunima sharma is a woman amputee the first woman amputee to climb mount everest she definitely would be surrounded by people who discourage her because she has no examples of any woman amputee climbing mount everest so everybody would different discourage her but she did not allow that discouragement into us into her into her into her she did not allow the negativity into her that's why she is able to succeed in climbing the mount everest friends this kind of inspirational examples i would say that actually make the evaluator enjoy your essay also you can write some historical aspect you can say how british could not occupy india they came as traders they realized that indian kings are formidable they are strong difficult to defeat them so they actually started creating dispute between the kings so they started disturbing internally even while ruling india also they tried to separate hindus from muslims you know the extremists started separating from the moderates so the divide and rule policy they realized that the best way or only way to destabilize india or to rule india is to create internal disturbance so and uh, that you can actually explain that for a paragraph or so you can write the story of a deaf frog you know a deaf frog there are a lot of frogs in a well and in a forest and uh, every frog uh, felt that they cannot climb the tree even if they felt that they want to climb the tree other frogs actually discouraged them so they heard the discouragement and they never tried a deaf frog actually tried because it could not hear the discouragement and it is able to, it is able to successfully climb the tree that example also you can write because you know the water can be around you it will not disturb you but if you allow it inside you it will disturb you uh, i mean the ship for example the drugs the smoking alcohol is there all around us it's easily available accessible but once you let them in it will destroy you just because it is there around you doesn't destroy you okay similarly in a religion also in any religion there are a lot of superstitions all of us uh, may be spiritual most of us may be spiritual but if we allow the superstitions into you it will destroy you similarly friends patriarchy is there all around us patriarchy in our family society in the movies everywhere patriarchy always you know men are strong they win the wars where women are always serving the men uh, they are always they are there only to love such kind of uh, femininity that kind of you know um, patriarchy is there all around in the movies in the social media everywhere everywhere but it will not affect us if you allow the patriarchy inside you it will affect you untouchability communalism casteism is there all around us but we should not allow it inside us because once you, once the people are allowing it inside them it will destabilize society the people similarly as i told you patriarchy commodification of women women are shown as commodity in advertisements in the movies in the social media everywhere in advertisements and you should not let it inside you though you see it though you are surrounded by it you should not let it inside you okay you can also write example of globalization how globalization is a good aspect however how you should not allow globalization in certain aspects of culture how you should not you should not allow them that you can write uh, but it is a sensitive topic globalization 
culture how culture uh, is being globalized since topic you should handle it with sensitivity okay so friends now uh, finally what is the moral what is the moral friends actually you have to write all these points not only at the personal level at the national level also for example india is a country around india in pakistan what is happening in myanmar what is happening in maldives what is happening you, you can actually write what is happening in maldives instability the myanmar the refugee crisis you can write pakistan how they are intolerant towards the minorities you can write all those things how terrorism is there in pakistan afghanistan how in china you know the uh, suppression of uh, uh, voice is there democracy is there so though all these things are there around india india should not allow them into the india if you allow those things into india india will destabilize you understand so i i have given at the personal level but at the national level also you can write these examples and friends friends uh, as i told you you can write about india you can write about india how india is surrounded by all kinds of negative things and how we should not allow them in, into the india okay for example friends we should we should never blame the world around us okay if we are affected if we are spoiled it's our problem that we let it inside us we should never blame the world around us that is a moral that is a moral of the story and another moral is moral of the statement another moral is that we should not let the bad things in for example friends covid 19 is there new strain is there in uk and usa now we should not blame usa and uk for developing new strain or china what we should do is how do we protect our country from that strain we should not allow that strain to come into india that's what we have to do that is actually the uh, statement given in the question in the essay so we should be strong to not allow it inside us anything bad around extreme care should be taken for not allowing anything inside friends the same essay some people may interpret differently they may actually think that if the ship there is water around the ship some amount of water is okay but if the water exceeds the ship will sink one kind of interpretation i would not say that interpretation is wrong but such people can give examples like green revolution is good to certain limit but too much fertilizers again sink the agriculture globalization is good but too much of it will sink the culture industrialization is good but too much of it will pollute the world you know people who interpret in that way can write in that way as i told you uh, your interpretation may not be same with everybody interpretation can be different but how are you substantiating your interpretation with examples with different uh, opinions theories hypotheses that is important friends now the fourth essay my friends the fourth essay to the statement simplicity is the ultimate sophistication this statement is actually given by leonardo da vinci friends leonardo da vinci is a great painter scientist mathematician navigator but you know you only need to know who said this without knowing who said this also you can write the essay simplicity is the ultimate sophistication that means friends science or art or architecture or our lifestyle or the way we speak whatever it may be simplicity is the ultimate sophistication that means there may be lot of things in art art is whatever you have to cut down all the clutter remove all the clutter just focus on the main essence main point and just go with that means simple you be simple and that will be the ultimate sophistication now how do we explain the statement friends if you know you can write the statement is given by leonardo da vinci and you can actually write some ideas about the statement you can start the essay like that you can say that simplicity comes from wisdom simplicity comes from wisdom why because you should have the ability to discard all the clutter unnecessary things around you only what is necessary you put that either in a speech or in an art or in the science experiment whatever you remove all the clutter whatever is important you just you should be able to absorb that important thing and able to put it out that requires wisdom wisdom okay you should pinpoint the main idea that is my interpretation of simplicity and definitely it is the ultimate sophistication because it is helpful for many it will inspire many we can actually explain that with examples friends see a teacher who understands the subject very well will explain the actual concept in the book essence of the book 
rather than throwing all the facts at the face of students, uh, rather than taking all statements and throwing at students, the, the she or he will explain the essence of the subject and that makes the subject easier, simpler for the student. You know, sometimes you will not be able to explain a statement as it is. In such cases, you can explain the statement through examples, okay. For example, great philosophers view the philosophy that is very simple to follow, simple to understand, great philosophers. Or great scientists view simple solutions to complex problems. We can give examples, friends, I'll come to that. So that, my dear friends, we call simplicity is the ultimate sophistication because simple things are easy to implement, easy to understand. You know, one example, uh, recently minimalist living is actually coming to the forefront. Minimalist living means you should be able to live with whatever is very much required. You cut down all the unnecessary expenditure expenses and live with the minimal required things. That is called minimalist living. And it is actually being implemented by some of the great businessmen like, you know, Warren Buffett, etc. And it is accepted widely as the best way of living, friends. <coughs> now, I would start applying this concept, simplicity, ultimate sophistication. I will start applying this concept in different sectors. First, I will start with, start with the persons. I will select some persons and I will tell how those persons followed simplicity and how it led to ultimate sophistication. Okay. For example, Mahatma Gandhi is there. He led a very simple lifestyle with minimal clothing, very simple lifestyle, very simple philosophy. You, you, his principles are simple, non-violence, truth, I mean honesty, you know, and uh, most of his principles are easy to follow, difficult to follow, but easy to understand, friends. And his philosophy is simple, understood by all, his lifestyle is simple, because of which he has become the prominent figure, he inspired millions of peoples, he, he, he even played a phenomenal role in uh, India gaining independence. India gaining independence. So in that way, I, I give my first example. Then Abdul Kalam. Friends, in order to give so many examples, just two or three. For example, Abdul Kalam. Abdul Kalam also, uh, his lifestyle is simple. His speeches are very simple. He actually puts the points in a simple way, understandable way. Even his books, The Wings of Fire, you can write the book's names also, friends. Vision 2020 for India, whatever. You can write the book's name. His books are simple, easily understandable, and they had great impact on the youth. It, he inspired millions of youth to take up research or to take up water field therein. He actually left Rastapati, Rastapati Bhavan with just two suitcases. Just an example of his simplicity, friends. Mother Teresa also led a very simple lifestyle. Uh, you know, her, her teachings are very simple. As I told you already, uh, helping hands are better than praying lips. Service to humanity, service to mankind. Very simple lifestyle, very simple philosophy. And uh, she's able to inspire several people to take up the social work. Social work. Similarly, Gautam Buddha also. Gautam Buddha's principles are simple, friend. His lifestyle is simple. For example, the eightfold path to achieve that peace, Nirvana, is easy to understand. And it is ultimate principle, friend. Anybody who follows that, actually, most likely they would uh, achieve the inner peace. Similarly, you can talk about Swami Vivekananda, his Chicago speech. You can talk about Abraham Lincoln, how his Jettysburg speech has profound, profound influence, how Martin Luther King's I Have a Dream speech. Very simple. All these things are very simple and they have profound influence on the audience, but, uh, I mean the youth or the people at the time. So friends, like that, I have explained the statement with some people, taking some people. Now I'll go to the next. I will explain how you can apply the principle of simplicity, is ultimate sophistication in the technology or innovation. How do you apply that? Friends, for example, you might have seen the Three Dates movie. There, Amir Khan says that uh, after going into the space, how do you write on the paper? Because there, the gravity is not there. So how uh, different scientists have start, started working on anti-gravity pens. At the time, how a person simply said, why don't you use a pencil? Because pencil uh, uh, can write anywhere because there is no gravity principle, there is no ink in pencil. <clears throat> so how complex problems can be solved by simple solutions, this is an example. <clears throat> also, simple innovations like wheel, how it has revolutionized, changed the world, changed transportation, spinning jenny, textile industry or pottery, how everything changed because of a wheel. You can actually mention uh, uh, examples of Moksha Guna Vishweshwaraya because he was the greatest civil engineer internationally and some of his ideas to solve the problems are very simple. For complex problems, he provides simple solutions. For example, Vizag beach, because of erosion of the beach, because of high siltation, you know, uh, 
Moksha Shoshraya just has drowned few ships at the right places to stop the siltation problem of Vaisak beach. Similarly, the Moose River Hyderabad frequently used to flood and he solved the flood problem very simply. So as a great civil engineer, as a person with great technology, he is able to provide simple solutions and they are the ultimate sophistication in solving the problems. Friends, even you can give example of MOM, I mean the Mars Mission of India. The Mars Mission of India is built with just Rs. 450 crores. Generally, all other Mars missions of other countries are thousands of crores. Whereas, you know, India's Mars mission is just 450 crores, even less than the budget of a movie. Budget of a movie. So, friends, why? Because the solution is simple. The idea is simple. They simply fire, even it is shown in one of the movies, the, the ball movies of India. They fire and leave it till it goes to a certain extent. Again, refire. Again, fire. So, the consumption of fuel will be reduced. Consumption will be reduced and overall cost will come down. So this example you can give for simplicity is ultimate sophistication and this actually astonished the world and after this mission many countries want to collaborate with India in the space technology. Friends even organic agriculture which our ancestors used to follow, now many are following, is actually a simple solution for agriculture because it, it, it uses simple bio pesticides, naturally available you know material, bio manure and if you have the right knowledge on organic agriculture you can actually produce a very good crop. That also, see you can actually spend four or five lines explaining how organic agriculture is, uh, you know, related, related to the simplicity, is ultimate sophistication, you know. Friends, now, now I'll move on to, see, first I explained about people, people, their lifestyles, then I came to the technology, I gave some good examples, maybe some examples which are good to me, good to me, then you know, the art, now I'll come to the art. <coughs> Friends, here, the people who have got good English language, <coughs> these kind of essays, they can get more marks. For example, the first essay, the international relations technology, their English language does not actually play any role. <coughs> but in this kind of essay, people who have good English good vocabulary, they can use all that, you know, because it will make the essay beautiful. <coughs> However, people with poor English also can get good marks, nothing like that. <coughs> Just the evaluator will look at your ideas, how you are conveying them. Again. In UPSC essay, simplicity is the ultra sophistication. Anybody who is able to write the essay, very simply, simple English, simple points, connecting them beautifully, ultimate sophistication. You can get very high marks, friends. And I am not joking. And friends, now, <coughs> art. <coughs> See, in art, it can be music, it can be painting, whatever. For example, it's muting music. You see some some songs, some old melodies, very simple music, simple lyrics, but they're extraordinary songs. Even today, we are inspired by those songs, right? You can give an example. Similarly, painting also. See, simplicity is effortless composition. <coughs> you know, like in a great painting, only enough brush strokes means they use very little water is required. The right amount of color, the right amount of brush strokes whatever is required with that they will create a beautiful painting so simplicity is ultimate sophistication even the painting friends even architecture also friends in architecture you have to use almost single geometry singular geometry rather than multiple uh, geometrical st structures a single geometry can be used throughout the building to enclose the space by giving good ventilation and also limited material limited material limited colors you can create beautiful architecture Friends, see, Laurie Baker is an example. Actually, Laurie Baker question came in UPSC also. 2017 means, I think, uh, they, ex they asked you to explain about Laurie Baker. Laurie Baker was a British-born Indian architect. He lived most of his life in Kerala after India got independence. And friends, he is a great architect because his, in his initiatives are cost-effective, energy-efficient, less energy, less cost. His architecture and designs actually maximum use of the space. What the space is there? You, you maximize the use of it. Proper ventilation, proper lighting. And you know, uncluttered, uncluttered, as I told you, simplicity, uncluttered. Yes, at it is striking aesthetic sensibility. He most used the locally available material of Kerala, whichever state he stayed in. So friends, like that you can write how art, architecture, painting, music, all these things, uh, where simple, you can apply the simplicity is ultimate sophistication. Even if you are, if you like iPhone, friends, you can write about iPhone also. You know, you can say how Zunad and I, the designer of the iPhone, how he said that I got rid of anything that is absolutely, you know, he, he got rid of anything that is not necessary and he has kept only those things that are useful. Means nothing, to improve the style they have put nothing. 
they have put only those things which are required for the you know user benefit for the usability so even uh, the this um, simplicity is ultimate, ultimate sophistication the statement is used by steve jobs it is a marketing technique because it's true apple iphone really is simple simple less colors no many colors smaller size so people who actually love iphone can actually write a paragraph not paragraph friends three to four lines about how you can apply the statement to iphone <coughs> also friends don't forget that you are writing upsc exam while writing upsc exam definitely i talk about the governance public administration laws acts india you have to write that friend you have to write at least one paragraph on that so now i have come to that point friends simplicity is the ultimate sophistication is applied even to the laws and acts for example our law should have simple language it is said that when british ruled india most of the laws are very complex language only lawyers can understand we say indian laws are lawyers paradise only lawyers can understand that but friends what is the ultimate purpose of law it should be easy, easily readable understandable to the public only then a law is considered to be more valuable right so the law or act should be framed in a simple language easy to understand easy to implement also for example friends the constitution of india though it is very well written a lot of articles are not easily implementable because understanding the statement is difficult sometimes only supreme court can interpret the statement that means the constitution of india has such kind of complex language though it's a uh, you know very good uh, constitution globally its language is complex so you have to give this kind of uh, examples again as also see you have to give examples of what are simpler and you should also give examples of something which is not simple also you have to write both sides of the coin friends then you be relevant right from current affairs tell why gst introduced friends actually the uh, one of the reasons for introduction of gst is that to make the indirect tax law of india easy to make it simple indirect tax law so the goods and service tax has brought several uh, indirect taxes into single umbrella it made easy simpler and it will actually help other countries to understand india's tax easily so other countries can do trade with india easily and indians who are paying indirect tax now can they, they can pay tax easily they do not actually leave out any tax so collection should increase i'm not saying collection increased collection should increase so in that way you can explain how gst uh, simplicity is ultimate sophistication also friends or foreign policy you can say how india's foreign policy should follow the same principle of simplicity and sophistication how we have to make a simple foreign policy i would say nam and panch are actually simple foreign policies and india should base most of other foreign policies also on the same line same line now coming to the history friends actually i have a flair for history whatever essay i wrote i will definitely mention historical aspect of the essay but i am not uh, saying that everybody should mention like that if you uh, if you have if you are liking towards history in every essay topic you bring some historical aspects okay so friends also education as i told you in every of, in each of my essays you will find a paragraph on education paragraph of historical aspect <clears throat> in this essay also in this essay also i will come to the education in some time so friend the simplicity also is applicable for the religion for example do you know why buddhism is widely followed than hinduism in those days not now in those days why buddhism spread so easily because there are many reasons one reason is that buddhism is simple to follow the philosophy is simple principles are simple easy understandable you don't have to spend much money to you know to um, uh, for the prayer of the god for example hinduism in some customs you have to pray you have to spend a lot of money to do a puja so where buddhism without even a poor person can practice the buddhism that is one reason so friend simplicity here also that's why it has spread globally very fast but nowadays even buddhism also some sections are have made praying to the buddha expensive so leaving it aside friends <coughs> bhakti movement and sufi movements why they spread so fast throughout india south india bhakti movement and north west india sufi movement why even the western india bhakti movement was there north india also bhakti movement was there why it was why it spread so easily friends because simplicity is the ultimate sophistication the bhakti movement and sufi, sufi movements actually used the local language local language is understandable simple ideas the bhakti science the lifestyle is simple they said that you can pray to the god you can reach the god just by music just by songs just by devotion dedication towards god you no need to buy anything you no need to connect any home mass pujas nothing so in that way even in this uh, uh, medieval history you can write an example of uh, simplicity easy ultimate sophistication friends 
as I told you, I'll come to education. I came to education. Our education system shall be made simple. The curriculum shall be made simple. Remove all the unnecessary things. For example, the recently printed NCRTs actually followed a system of simplicity and sophistication. The books are simple. The main idea they propose in the textbooks, the main idea, they'll explain the examples and they leave out unnecessary facts which were there in the previous textbooks. You can write, friends, you can actually write example of NCRT also in this essay exam. In this essay, okay. So the curriculum and syllabus shall be made simple by removing all the clutter and focus on the essence rather than the information or facts. That should be the uh, way in which our education system should be there. Not only in the CBS NCRTs, the state syllabus also should learn from that. Okay, friends. Now, as I told you, in UPSC exam, try to bring in governance and laws and acts. Governance, you know, the governance system should be made simple, easily understandable. Easily implementable. Governance means what? Making of laws. Public administration is implementation of laws. Both of them should be made simple. So even the present government has a, has a motto of minimum government, maximum governance. So friends, so you should write, you can actually write many examples. Actually, for the minimum government, maximum governance, government has a lot of things. It has merged a few ministries. It has merged a few departments. You can do examples also. Because ultimately, remember that you are writing an exam to become civil servant. So write something about governance also. Now, how do we conclude? I would actually love to conclude by saying that our education system should actually teach us, uh, teach about our culture, technology shall be taught, or arts, arts shall be taught in a simple way. Uh, so that students will realize this principle of simplicity, easy, ultimate sophistication, so that they don't spend too much time on unnecessary build up around the things they'll actually focus on the necessary things so this would be my essay for this one friends now the next essay is about culture and civilization friends so, culture is what we are, means internal, it is internal, what we are, culture. Civilization is what we have, it's external, what we have around us. But friends, culture is still a part of civilization, but broadly culture is what we have. Means whatever we have, that is our civilization. Civilization is whatever we have. Culture is whatever we are. <laughs> that is what the statement is. Now, you can try to explain it using theory. Or you can explain it through examples in your own style, own way you can write this essay. I would write it in this way. <clears throat> I would actually explain this statement in two parts. First, I'll explain what is the meaning of culture is what we are. Then I'll explain civilization is what we have. Then I'll compare, contrast them and give examples. And then I'll apply it to different sections. Okay. So first, I'll explain culture is what we are. See, culture is a knowledge or features of a human society, a group of people living in society, whatever features they have, whatever knowledge they have is called culture. It can be their knowledge of the language or script or you know the features can be the type of dress they wear, the, their fashion, the kind of jewels they use, their belief system, religion, faith or art, their dance form, music form or even the type of food they eat, all these things come under the, <coughs> come under the culture. That's why we are saying culture is what we are. <clears throat> what we are depends upon what we speak, <clears throat> what we write, what kind of dress we wear, what food we eat, based on that. <clears throat> Similarly, friends, culture is actually learned. In society, people learn the culture and they share the culture through symbols. Symbols, for example, <clears throat> dance form is there. Dance form is a kind of symbol. So others will learn from, uh, one will learn from others the dance or music will learn from others. So because they are shared, shared in society. Similarly, language, language is symbol. We learn it from others. <coughs> food habits, cooking the food. We learn from others. So, culture is learned and shared through the symbols. <coughs> Friends, culture is not inherited biologically. <coughs> it does not come as inherited biologically. We learn it unconsciously. As we live in a family, with the peers, <coughs> in society, with the people around us, we learn unconsciously from the, from from around us. We call it as enculturation. <coughs> Friends, culture is shared by our society. 
and society to society culture will change for example north indians have one kind of dressing style food habits south indians have one kind of food habits so culture is short of society and changes from social society and also friends culture actually helps us in acting in social appropriate way if you are living in a society you will talk and behave in a particular way which is acceptable to that society and that is culture <clears throat> also you can predict how others act in society you predict how others will act <clears throat> for example in a society where super stitions are given importance to <clears throat> a black cat has uh, you know you, you have uh, come across a black cat you can predict that the person will not go out for some time or <clears throat> somebody has sneezed they will not go out for some time so you can predict how others will act in a culture so the both the things i gave examples are of superstition <clears throat> now friends culture is not homogeneous in a society in society also the culture varies from place to place family to family and friends culture is integrated that means it is interrelated the kind of dance you do the kind of music music you play the kind of dress you wear the food all together integrated interrelated holism culture is such a kind of holism various aspects are interrelated in the culture <clears throat> friends what i'm doing is i'm trying to explain culture is what we are <clears throat> i'm trying to explain the statement in my words so similarly friends culture is dynamic because for example indian culture changed because of colonization from the european countries and the, the british or because of globalization or because of migration from the migrants from last 3 4 3 years the migrants they influence the culture of india within india also different states as they start interacting with each other the culture started changing so culture interact with each other it changes because because of exchange of ideas exchange of symbols for example uh, the music of one region can interact other region and uh, you know the, this music will learn some some uh, new tips techniques ragas shrutis from other music they will integrate with their music and they create a mixed music so friends basically culture has to adapt to the changing surroundings that is the first statement now i will explain second statement civilization is what we have <coughs> so here i will say that civilization is a process of development society okay civilization gradually leads to that development society till it becomes a complex city a city where the transport system is uh, in a particular way governance system is particular way buildings are in a particular way technology is particular way you know that is called civilization so it it is development in terms of government governing methodology technology agriculture better uh, technology agriculture industry even culture <clears throat> even culture is a part of civilization so culture is just one aspect of civilization and culture is what we uh, civilization is what we have basically what we have we have large population centers based on that we actually do our day to day activities for example the monumental architecture the art style that we have is actually civilization because we got it from our ancestors whatever and we developed from there developed from there for example the communication system previously they used pigeons then horses then telephones now internet so civilization is actually even communication how it ad ad advances is example of civilization so system of administrative territory the kind of government structure for example when i am born in this country i already have democratic kind of government state government central government local government so by the time i am born i already have that civilization in place so civilization is what we have so it is a complex division of labor D different people doing different kind of works different kind of jobs the software the industries the farmers this is labor and you know civilization actually divides the people into socio economic classes so this is what we have in civilization friends now my third uh, step would be compare the culture civilization first i explain what culture is then what civilization is now i'll compare it compare i would say that culture actually changes over a period of time gradually for example all our old practices old styles old superstitions old rituals gradually we will lose them we will get the new tech, new way of uh, i mean um, new language uh, new modulations in the language new type of music so it's over a period of time the culture will change okay it changes as we interact with other cultures exchange of ideas it will change but friend civilization we don't call change 
advances culture changes but civilization advances for example civilization olden days we used pigeon horses now you use the telephone mobile phone after that no internet so friends it is advancement it's not just a change advancement culture is not advancement for example you cannot say that the new music is better than the old music you cannot say you only say that new music is different from the old music you don't say it's advanced it's developed music you cannot say that even the art painting also you cannot say it's better than the old old paintings so friends culture culture can flourish without civilization for example even in the tribal areas in the amazon rainforest also culture can flourish people can develop one kind of music art food habits whatever their civilization may not be there but culture can flourish okay but reverse is not true that means civilization can never happen without culture first of all people should have such a culture only then those people will develop civilization for example i want to build a temple for building a temple or church or mosque first of all i should have a culture i should have, i should pray to some god i should have religious religious faith belief based on that i will build temples build buildings based on that so that is one one comparison then friends culture internal whereas civilization external now actually you can give example culture internal means faith belief is culture internal transportation communication system is external civilization actually you can give an example friend the example i think i wrote somewhere the example is for example to build a structure to build a temple or mosque or any building culture civilization both will play a role our culture will tell us what type of shape it has to take because for every shape we have one meaning in the religion okay based on our faith we will draw the plan of the we will um, we will decide what kind of temple has to be built but civilization gives you right material right technology right design to build the temple or build the mosque or build the church whatever so to build a structure culture civilization both are important culture comes from internally faith and belief system civilization comes from externally externally now friends all societies have culture but a few have civilization for example tribal societies may not have civilization but they have culture for example so just like how you wrote example of uh, civilization culture how you compared compared it for a building a structure you can compare the economic system also the kind of economic system we design for example in the islamic banking islamic banking their culture says that they should not take interest so based on that the bank is designed civilization will design the monetary system the kind of currency you use the kind of bank you build so economic system also is a combination of culture and civilization friends <coughs> also try to give international examples of uh, culture and civilization not just in examples now also definitely i should write about india because you know i am writing upsc exam i should write about india also <coughs> changing trends of indian culture and civilization changing trends you write about that for example india india if you want you can draw india map you can draw india map generally i don't advise drawing the map in the essays but <coughs> if it is really important you can draw <coughs> you can say what kind of food habits here what kind of dance here <coughs> what kind of language used here what kind of you know <coughs> dressing habit is here you can write you can mention you can say india is able to unite different cultures together they are all able to coexist which is a achievement <coughs> which is nowhere there around the world so india is an example of the world india teaches to the world that the entire world also can coexist even if we have different cultures <coughs> and friends culture of india played a vital role in civilization you can explain with examples you can talk right about guptas or right about the mauryas right about <coughs> the moguls you can write you can say factors responsible for change in culture why indian culture gradually changed because of migration the aryans came the mongols came to india then britishers came to india arabs came to kerala for trade so because of migration migration you know the culture of india gradually kept on changing also colonization changed in indian culture western education also many indians who went to um, uk or western countries learned and came back they changed the culture of india and the western education came to india during british time that also changed the indian culture the cinema also <clears throat> as we are exposed to the global cinema our culture is changing gradually for that you can write many examples also what kind of culture is changing because of cinema you can write you can write about dance music <coughs> you can write about way of talking behavior the patriarchal systems how they are changing you can write all those things <coughs> also friends the modernization 
and globalization is also changing the culture of India, culture of India. And based on that, our civilization is also changing. Civilization is types of buildings we are constructing, <coughs> type of transport and system we are using. That is also changing because of globalization, modernization. Also, friends, if you want, you can talk about Indus Valley civilization. You can say that well, the mother goddess of Indus Valley civilization, Pashupati of Indus Valley civilization, praying to the nature animals of Indus Valley civilization is still continued. The culture is continued. But <coughs> the civilization did not continue. Immediately after the Indus Valley civilization, the Aryans came and civilization actually was extinct. Extinct. So the culture continued, civilization did not continue. You can actually write about that. <coughs> and friends, as I told you, I always write about education. Whatever essay you give me, I will write about education. So I will say that <coughs> we should have strong culture, a strong civilization. How it is possible? Our younger generation or the people tomorrow who are going to keep up, keep up our culture, our civilization. So, though we are influenced by other civil, other culture, civilization, we should ensure that whatever is strong in us, whatever cultural aspects, civilization aspects are strong in India, we have to keep with them. We should never leave them. For that, our younger generation should be made strong mentally, physically, culturally, emotionally, technologically. <clears throat> and it is possible only through a strong educational system. Only then, younger generation tomorrow, they will make India strong in culture or civilization. I mean, in that, in that direction, right? But friends, be sensitive. Don't uh, uh, write culture in negative aspect. Okay? Be broad while writing about culture. Be broad while writing about Indian culture. Don't talk about religion. Never uh, do that, that thing. Because if you write a very good essay, and finally if you slightly write Indian culture as Hinduism or something like that, there is a very good chance that your marks will fall down drastically. Be careful, friends. <coughs> now, friends, I will finish it in some more time. We have two more essays left. So, six one. Six essay. There can be no social justice without economic prosperity. But economic prosperity without social justice is meaningless. So, friends, what they are saying is, if you do not have the prosperity, if you do not have the financial capability, social justice is not possible. First thing. Second thing. If... If you have economic prosperity, if you are rich, financially you are strong. But if you are not following social justice, then such an economic prosperity is meaningless prosperity. There are two things. So entire essay is about two things. Explain those two things, give examples and apply it in different sect sectors. Friends, see, uh, you can try to explain, you can start this essay with an example. Either a national example or family level or as I told you I like history, history example also you can start with. For example, you can start with a national example, you can say that <coughs> in a country like India, which is developing, India is not a rich country, friends, developing country, we don't have enough economic resources to create safety structures for women, enough street lights, enough police personnel, enough courts, enough safe structures basically uh, are not possible for India because India population is more and our economic resources are limited. <coughs> That's why. It's unaffordable. We could not actually uh, take care of women at this uh, economic level very easily. Not only women, even vulnerable sections, the disabled people, the lower caste people, the minorities, the land, agricultural laborers, all these people also need unable to provide them the basic necessities, the health and education, food, whatever, because of lack of uh, enough economic resources. So friends, what I'm telling here, in India, social justice is not completely possible because our financial capabilities are strictly limited. Okay. Now second statement. See, there are two. First statement, India. Still here, India. Now, economic prosperity come to USA. USA is a rich country. They have enough financial resources to meet all the requirements of all the people of their country, all the citizens. However, still there is violence against women. Still there is a uh, discrimination of the black, violence of the black against the black. So. USA, though it is rich, though it is economically prosperous, it is meaningless as long as, meaningless as long as the women and the black do not find their right place, as long as there is violence against them. So in that way, you can actually write the first paragraph. So you are trying to explain the statement, the example. Or, you know, some people can start with the family example. You can say that in a poor family, child marriage is connected. Why? Because poor family having more children. The father does not have enough financial resources to, to take care of the children for a longer time. So he will he wants to reduce the burden by marrying off the daughter to somebody and send them away. But 
a economic prosperous family also does the same thing child marriage because of superstition or culture such kind of economic prosperity is meaningless is meaningless so in that way you can write an example <coughs> then friends historical example in medieval india how sati was practiced uh, even if the kings were pros kingdoms were prosperous even then there was caste discrimination there were women discrimination so in that way such kind of uh, uh, economic prosperity meaningless you can write you can write some example so friends now 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 come to the actual question question friends always try to explain the key word of the question social justice what do you mean by the social justice because that is the most important uh, word in this entire essay explain it in one page or one sorry one paragraph or so you can say that uh, social justice what do you mean you know it says that all women should have same rights and opportunities everybody should be able to access the health care education uh, safe drinking water safe space to live safety everybody should have access to that that is called social justice social justice means it should aim for a level playing field everybody there should be no discrimination whatsoever for any section of society so the idea behind social justice is that all human beings are same all have the same innate value no person's value is more or less than the others so in this way in some one beautiful paragraph you can explain what you mean by social justice you can explain in simple language my dear friends and you can say that as social justice is not there in many countries there were many revolts movements to achieve social justice example the women's right movements the suffrages for example women fought for the right to vote suffrages movement women rights movements civil right movements by minorities by the blacks by the gays by the lesbians whatever lgbt's you know they they fought for their civil rights similarly the disabled people also fought for their rights even the manual scavengers of india you, may, you might have heard about the bajwala wilson he was a four he was the forefront of fighting uh, for the manual scavengers because uh, he uh, that was not social justice uh, doing such kind of work such kind of labor for money so friends now i have explained social justice you give some examples for example according to me social justice means equality of sharing of benefits sharing of burden equality among different countries or within a country different sections of society or within a family among different people the son or daughter whatever so if you example for that one i can say that one example is in several countries rich get all the benefits it is the rich who get all the benefits and poor get all the burden okay international example if you want industrial countries are are you know polluting the world for their advantage why because industries help them develop industrially economically but in that process they are polluting the world causing global warming global warming raising the sea level sea level is causing burden to whom small island developing states so who is getting the burden here small island developing states who is getting the benefit here developed countries so there is the example social justice is not there internationally to explain that gender example is within a family or society men get all the benefits it can be education most poor family is higher education is only for the men similarly property in the property inheritance most of the property comes to the son not daughter jobs most jobs are for the men women generally are not hired for several jobs uh, leisure men get a lot of leisure whereas women are always burdened with the family responsibilities and growing up the children and doing the domestic chores even if she works outside for you know econ economically if she for economic reasons she works outside so friends women gets all the burden so these kind of examples if you give you actually take the point to the evaluator the gravity of the social injustice prevalent in the society you have to give the two examples examples are the best way of uh, uh, telling you the intensity of the problem now friends also caste you can give the example of caste also caste system now explain the first statement of the question social justice is not possible without economic prosperity yes now explain that how for example healthcare can you meet healthcare of all in india impossible because government hospitals do, does not have such those many beds or equipment or medicines or doctors or infrastructure education for all is important for social justice but it's also difficult because government cannot build so many primary schools and secondary schools with good, good infrastructure hiring so many teachers giving them salary in every village is difficult now transportation difficult 
providing access to all the villages, isolated places, hilly areas, deserts, tribal areas is very difficult because India does not have such a huge financial capability. Pensions, difficult. Giving pensions to all the poor old people, all the disabled people, all the unemployed, all the widows, all the labors is difficult because you don't have <coughs> such kind of economic capability. What I'm telling you is, short justice is not possible without economic prosperity. <coughs> then child labor. Friends, India is trying, working hard to remove the child labor out of the cracker industry, textile industry, iron industry, but several poor families, they require children to work. Only, they, only then they can meet their ends. I mean, only then they can get enough food or enough resources. Similarly, farmers who say, why it is happening? Because most of farmers are indebted. Indebted because they don't have the economic resources. The government is unable to give them the soft loans to all the farmers. Even Naxals. Why Naxals are angry? Why Naxalism is happening? Because many people feel that the government is not giving them enough resources. Enough rights. Actual rights, rights and resources. Both are there. Friends, also you can use, as I tell you always, in, in as, as much as possible in every essay, or every general studies question, try to bring in constitution of India if possible. For example, in this essay, I would say DPSP is directed to principles of state policies. I mean, they are mostly for economic democracy and the social democracy because fundamental rights are political democracy. So DPSP is not made justiciable. Why? Why, why the constitution did not justify the DPSP? Because the constitution knows that it is difficult for government to implement DPSPs. Difficult. There are several reasons. One reason is economic, economic feasibility. Economically, our country is not up to the level. We are not prosperous enough to implement all DPSPs. You can use some examples. Art 39 is there. Right to adequate means of livelihood for all citizens? Very difficult. Article 41. Right to work and assistance to all unemployed, old, sick, disabled? Difficult. Article 47. Rise the nutrition of everybody in India? Standard of living of everybody in India? Public health, everybody, difficult. Difficult as long as we are not economically prosperous. So that way, my dear friends, I explained the first statement of the question. Social justice is not possible without economic prosperity. You can also mention that a lot of government schemes are unsuccessful because of lack of funds, lack of scarcity. Of course, friends, corruption is there. Corruption is a different thing. We cannot explain about corruption in this essay. But one thing is scarcity of funds. All these government schemes are not able properly because of scarcity of funds. Now let us come to the second statement of the question. <clears throat> second statement says, economic prosperity is meaningless without social justice. That means, though a country is rich, society is rich, family is rich, a person is rich, if social justice is not there, there is no meaning for the prosperity. Meaningless. For example, friends, I told you already, in developed countries like USA, racial discrimination is there. For example, not slavery as of now, slavery was there before. For example, uh, blacks are discriminated even today. After the 9 by 11 attacks by the Taliban on the Twin Towers of USA, stereotyping of Muslims even continuing till today. Then what is the use of such kind of prosperity? For example, ageism is there in US ageism. Old people have discrimination in USA too. They are seen as a burden. They are denied the work. Even there is general discrimination in USA. There is violence against women. Uh, the rapes, number of rapes in USA are far more than many poor countries also. The wage gap is there, almost 82 percent of uh, US women earn less than US men. LGBT oppression is there, so all these things are social injustice. Even child abuse is there, pornography is there, pedophiles are there, child abuse, child abuse is there in USA. So in USA, Native Americans even today are not getting clean drinking water. Then what is the uh, use of economic prosperity? What is the use of USA becoming a rich country? So in that way you explain how economic prosperity is meaningless without social justice. So friends, coming to China. Now see, always you prefer to give interesting examples. See for example friends, in the, in the statement there is nothing about India. So don't limit your essay only to India. Of course write more about India, but you, you know, write about other countries also. Countries like USA, China, West European countries have to be included in the essay rating. So friends, China has focused on rapid economic growth. They have grown a lot after 1978 economic reforms. China has grown a lot. And uh, you know, uh, but however, though economically they have succeeded. Now China is number two globally economically, in GDP wise, economically. But along with the economic growth, the income inequality increased. The sectarian inequality increased. 
the urban rural gap increased so economic prosperity is happening parallelly social injustice is also happening both are happening in tandem you understand thus in the process of gaining economic prosperity china neglected the social injustice of course china is a non democratic country it's a communist country that may be one of the reasons but again this will also also friends india should learn always you say india should learn we should always learn from the mistakes of others so india right now is trying for economic prosperity india is trying to beat china and usa in near future india will definitely become number one country down the line but in that process india should carefully tread india should not repeat with china we should ensure that social justice goes hand in hand with economic prosperity for that my dear friends what is important first thing what is important is as government of india focus only on economic prosperity the following people should help in achieving social justice who are the following people ngos all of india has a strong ngo system of course some ngos are purely for economic benefits however ngos are working in education field health field for lower caste people for farmers they are working that has to be strengthened then opposition parties should always remain the government about social injustice constructive criticism is important that's why opposition in a democracy should be very strong it should not be suppressed by media or whatever social think tank shall be given funds in the country academicians should form a social think tanks they should do research on what government has to do to avoid social injustice friends academic think tanks can imagine the future they can see okay this is a kind of economic development if this follows what will happen in future so they have to uh, and, um, if, if the government is delineating they have to put them in the right track that is the role of short think tanks in the media friends media should always focus not only on showing out uh, the business i mean showing out the crimes or whatever it should write more about the social injustice happening to the, those people who don't have a voice voiceless people okay so when these four are happening properly india will de definitely be able to uh, give social justice along with economic prosperity now in this amartya sen jagdish bhagwat debate is my favorite Uh, it was there in the news for quite some time in the last four to five years. So you can actually use that debate. You can say Amartya Sen says that India should invest more on the social infrastructure, the health and education, to boost the productivity of its people. Understand? So here he is mostly investing in the social justice. I mean the health, education, these things. Thereby, automatically the economy will grow. That is his idea. Even uh, Abdul Kalam also said that you have to invest more on the. Uh, social infrastructure however jagadish bhavati says that the growth the economic growth may rise in equality initially but don't worry about that sustained growth will eventually raise the economic resources sustained growth eventually help in economic development so that the redistribution automatically happen it will mitigate the initial inequality it will reduce the inequality so he is saying that government should not focus much on the social sector schemes government should focus on the economic growth only as economic growth happens as prosperity comes as more income comes automatically government will have money for social sector schemes that is so he is following the top down approach amar sen bottom up approach so friends uh, uh, you read about this actually amar sen bhagwat debate you can use it not only this essay but several essays where a developmental uh, perspective comes you can use this uh, essay use this uh, debate friends how do i conclude this essay i would say general knowledge of this essay friend normally uh, my style of concluding any essay is if there are two things given in the essay you tell that both are important both should go hand in hand neglecting any one thing will disturb the harmony it is for anything it is for anything you can use this kind of uh, statements so here what i write is social justice economic prosperity should go hand in hand over emphasize on any one of the things will disturb the balance disturb the harmony you have to balance the two also you can use some statistics numbers you can say that uh, india in the process of achieving 5 trillion dollar economy which modi which the prime minister sorry prime minister uh, keeps on saying uh, by 2025 the government should focus on means in the process of achieving the uh, fight for economy we should focus on reducing the social injustices like discrimination gender race ethnicity caste class work we have to help for social empowerment women empowerment etc only then my dear friends a meaningful economic growth can happen meaningful economic growth is a term here which i have to focus in the conclusion in india in other other countries also so friends the last essay 
I think most of you are already, you know, feeling sleepy. So friends, the last essay, the seventh essay, because eighth essay already explained in the beginning. Eighth essay explained in the beginning. Okay, patriarchy is the least noticed at the most significant structure of social inequality. In this kind of essays, you explain what patriarchy is. You explain what is a social inequality. Try to tell different reasons for social inequality and explain how patriarchy is an important part of it and also explain why it is least noticed. All these dimensions, if you explain my dear friends, you would get very good marks. Now, social inequality, I told you, social inequality should explain. Social inequality can be found in not only patriarchy, caste discrimination, racial, ethnic, you can actually mention SCs, STs like that, minorities. You can mention minorities means uh, the Rohingya Muslims in, uh, uh, you know, the Myanmar and the Tamilians in the uh, Sri Lanka and, you know, the uh, Hindus or other minorities in uh, Pakistan. You can mention examples. Women, women, how they are uh, treated, treated, treated unequally compared to men. The old people, social inequality is there. Children and vulnerable sections, disabled people, disabled people. Means basically, you tell about how social equality is found in different places or sections of society. It is not found only in um, uh, patriarchy, but other places also. Just to, before building up an essay, give a uh, give a broad view. Broad view. Broad view is always uh, given more marks in the essays. Class inequality, economic class. How landless agriculture laborers are looked low. Regional inequality. How uh, Urissa, Bundel can regional inequality. How Royal Sema in Andhra compared to the coastal Andhra. The regional inequality also you can bring up. So friends, now, <coughs> now come to patriarchy. I told you, first explain what is social inequality. Explain what are the various forms of social inequality. Then now explain patriarchy. What is patriarchy? Friends, patriarchy can be seen in the following things. First, for example, property. The property inherited from the parents is mostly controlled by men. Even the ways, in the jobs, there is a ways inequality. Article 39 also talks about that, ways inequality. Also, friends, the political power. How political power is in the hands of the men? Why almost 90%, almost 90% of Lok Sabha members are men only in India? Also, in a village or in a family, the moral authority men, whatever the man says, is a moral authority. That is patriarchy. Also, special privileges for men. Men can have leisure in the family. Men, they know to do the domestic chores, domestic course. Only the women will perform all those things. Special privileges are there for men. Uh, men has to be considered superior to men. They should be, uh, you know, treated as gods in some religions, you know. Also, men control reproduction. How many children are required in the family? Uh, if a female is there in the in the womb, female feticide, decision will be taken by the men. So, men control reproduction of the woman. Also, violence is the biggest form of patriarchy. It can be domestic violence, violence at the workplace, public violence in the public places, whatever, is a symbol of patriarchy. Also, birth of male child is preferred in all religions. Birth of male child is preferred. Of course, the reason may be because um, women have security problems in society, dowry is there, but still, male child is preferred. It is an example of patriarchy. Also, freedom of choice. Women, ha Men have freedom of choice kind of job they want to do, kind of career they want to choose, kind of marriage they want to do. Whereas women do not have freedom of choice in most families. Also freedom of movement. Women don't have the freedom of movement. Uh, they cannot go for trekking, they cannot go out uh, for tourism alone with their friends, not alone mostly. Most friends mostly. So these are the symbols of patriarchy. Even recognition, men are recognized more. For example, in cricket, uh, in cricket the men recognize more. Women cricket, they are not recognized mostly. So friends, recognition is also there. In uh, so. To try to explain the patriarchy, what is patriarchy, different forms of patriarchy, you tell that gender gap is widening not only in India, the gap is widening even in developed countries like US and Japan and economically fast developing countries like China also. Now friends, the third part of the essay, you know we have to go, here you have to go point by point friends, part by part. Now come to the third part of the essay. First you explain social inequality, then explain patriarchy, now you will explain about why it is least noticed. Why least notice, friends? It is least noticed because it is accepted. It is accepted as the norm from time immemorial, from ancient history onwards. It is accepted. Even in the mass media, movies, television, everywhere, the patriarch is accepted. It is shown. Also, friends, women do not have awareness. 
women are unable to fight for their rights because women are not aware of the gender equality also illiteracy because of illiteracy women are unable to come out and fight against patriarchy also the attitude friends the male's attitude uh, uh, even the female attitude of acceptance of subjugation and the male attitude of domination is important part why it is least noticed men <coughs> do not notice it women does not notice it even the media media is not reporting more incidents about patriarchy that's the reason friends now why it is continuing patriarchy you can say that children learn from the family society that's why it's continuing and children learn from the movies even the mass media advertisement social media everything is showing patriarchy as a common norm that's why it is continuing even today and stereotyping for example males means you know masculinity dominating aggressive one kind of which is portrayed women means subservient caring loving you know tender this kind of uh, 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 portrayal is happening outside in the world that's why the gender inequality or patriarchy is continuing even the laws like dowry prohibition act even now dowry is there domestic violence prohibition domestic violence is uh, going uh, you know uh, continuously in most rural areas and urban areas of india so these laws are not well implemented because these laws are not well implemented even the police most of the police are insensitive to this kind of laws these are the reasons why patriarchy is continuing and female illiteracy is there that is the reason for continuing patriarchy friends as i told you in most of the essay i write about the ancient india i write about medieval india i, I mean i give importance to history in the essay writing because i feel evaluated when this history will give more marks so patriarchy in the ancient india you write about ancient india medieval india you can say how in the rituals from ancient india women is considered as a devout wife staying in the home considering man as a god man as a master in the ancient scriptures also women self sacrifice self purification this kind of images even the laws of manu says that no woman is like a property commodity for the man women should be dependent on the man otherwise considered to be disloyal this kind of you know rituals are there not only in one religion all religions friends all religions but you know pre vedic period in the actual in the vedic period women are given much importance post vedic period gradually this kind of laws start coming into the society and culture now how do you address patriarchy this is something which i have definitely right in the essay they did not ask you about how to address but when there is a problem in the essay you have to give solution also you say that women should be politically empowered for example local elections are empowered but sarpanch pati is there it has to be addressed and uh, state level national level reservation should be there women reservation social empowerment special care should be taken for solving the malnutrition of women health care should be there for women education women should be encouraged there are many acts and laws which has to be you know implemented better economic empowerment the inheritance of property from the parents have to divide equally between the son and daughter it is there in the law but implementation should happen even the jobs should be given for women mostly incentives should be given for the corporates to give jobs to women equal pay 39 article has to be dpsp has to be emphasized and law strict implementation dowry domestic violence feticide punishment shall be stringent and awareness generation to the women about their rights shall be more even the attitude of the men has to be changed in the education system for example they should be uh, thought that domestic chores should be uh, done by men women equally uh, the sensitivity towards women should be increased police government of which everybody should be sensitized towards women friends also write about all constitutional provisions uh, which are again as the patriarchy for example preamble how it talks about equal status to all sex society article 14 equal before law 15 no discrimination based on uh, race caste sex sex is there there 16 equal opportunity public employment 39 equal pay 42 how maternity relief shall be given human condition will be created in the work 51a how it is a fundamental uh, duty of everybody to respect dignity of women also friends government has taken many steps you can write those steps beti bachao bachao padhao bachao jola ski pradhan mantri you can write all those steps and also in the conclusion you can see the position of india in the global gender gap index why india is put from 108 to 112 what has to be done so all these things point all these points you are right friends and the eighth essay technology and future friend this essay i have explained in the beginning if you listen to this uh, video my first essay this essay only so take care friends see you all the best i will come up with answers for gs1 shortly